Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here in the series. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. The last episode we went ahead and updated the icon here for our application, as we can see here, and also the name here. It's pretty straightforward, showed you some pretty useful uh, external tools to make all the proper icons and whatnot for the different densities. So if you missed it, I'll link a card in the top right. And today we're going to talk about signing our app, getting a if we click up here, uh, build, I don't know if you can see that or not, I don't think so, but generate sign bundle slash APK. Uh, and this will allow us to basically put our app on the App Store. Uh, so before we go ahead and jump into that, I do want to just bounce over to Google Chrome here. Um, I have signed into my Google Play console. Uh, and so I have a few apps out here in production, absolutely nothing glorious, but um, it is already signed in. If you don't have an account, you can just search for the Google Play Store console at Google. Find the first link here, the play.google.com. It'll ask you to sign in to a, an email or, or a Google account. There is a $25 one-time fee to create the account, but then after that, that's it. There's uh, no annual fee, there's no monthly fee, there's nothing along those lines. And then you can update and publish as many apps as you possibly can. Uh, under that same account. So this is my developer account uh, for personal use that I've had for years now. And uh, I guess we're just gonna go ahead and continue on with this little dashboard and click create app here. This is pretty new-ish to me, the look and feel of this. Um, it's been a while since I've created this uh, an app from scratch here, but we're gonna go ahead and just create a simple morning app. We are defaulting to the English United States uh, it is an app, it is not a game, and it is a free app. So it's pretty straightforward here. Of course, we're gonna have to go ahead and accept these different policies and, and laws and such. And then we can go ahead and create our application. Once this loads here, we're gonna be brought to a pretty blank uh, dashboard here. There's a whole lot of basically like things that we need to do in order for this to even get to the point where we can submit it for the first time. Uh, but if we take a look here on the left-hand side, there are a bunch of different sections here. We have release, we have grow, quality, monetize, and then policy. So there are different areas here that all kind of correspond to different tasks or different things that you can go ahead and do. Uh, for instance, quality is where you're gonna have all your ratings and reviews, and then also your crashes, ANRs, application not responding. Uh, you get app size metrics and stuff like that. Um, and then you know the release area here is gonna be where you're gonna create new releases, either the initial release or updates to the application itself. Uh, and then, you know, there's a whole lot here. So I don't want to dive into too much more about what the actual dashboard has and all the ins and outs. I think we'll kind of cross that as we move forward. Uh, and instead, we're just going to bounce over to signing our app. So both of these links here, both of these pages, I will link in the description so that you have them and they're easy to get to. Um, but here, basically what we need to do is we need to sign our app with a key. So we've been working under a debug build here. We've been working under basically not a signed application. And that's good enough for us to you know, create this entire YouTube series, get something up and running, proof of concept, whatever. But that's not good enough for Google standards. They won't allow you to upload basically a debug build. You need to upload a signed build here. So if we quickly bounce over to Android Studio, we can see inside of our build.gradle file that we do have one build type that comes with our application. This is the release build type. However, inside of our build variants here, we have the debug and release build variants. Like I mentioned, we've been running the debug variant and the release variant. If we actually go ahead and click that and try to run it, we run into a little bit of an issue here. It's talking about edit a configuration. And actually the issue down here is it says the APK you're currently selecting, the variant is not signed. Please specify a signing config for this variant, the release config, or excuse me, the release variant. That is where this other documentation comes into play here. And basically we are gonna go ahead and create a key store, a password for that key store, an alias to our key, and then a password to that key as well so that we can go ahead and sign our application and generate the appropriate file, the appropriate bundle that we need in order to upload it to Google Play here. So we're just going to go ahead and follow the documentation here. And the documentation mentions here going to build, generate sign bundle slash APK. And now we have two options here, app bundle and APK. Uh, at this point, it is worth it to just go with the Android app bundle. 
there are a few benefits. They list them here, smaller download size, on-demand app features, asset-only modules. So basically, it's a better version of just putting a signed APK up there. Google has some enhancements so that it only downloads the correct assets that the particular device downloading the application can handle. So there's a little bit of optimization going on, and it's just an added benefit that Google added in a little while ago. So at this point, 2021, there's no reason why, well, there's not no reason you should use a signed APK, but for the default, we're just gonna go with the Android app bundle. We're gonna go ahead and click next, and normally this is gonna be filled out if we've done this before, but because we haven't done this, we actually need to go ahead and create a key store. So we can go ahead and click new here, and then we basically need to fill out this entire form. Okay, so I've gone ahead and filled out this form here. Just wanna run over a few things here. So it is important to basically keep all this information because it's the only way you're going to be able to certify to Google that you are the one that owns this key store and has permission to update the app and all that kind of stuff. So you come up with a particular location for a key store, you come up with a password to that key store, and then specifically we're going to need a key to sign this particular app. So we need an alias for it. We're simply just gonna write simple Morty key. Then we need a password for that key as well, also confirming it. Validity 25 years, that is the default. And then this form here is pretty straightforward to just fill out, especially for personal development, not much to it. Uh, if you are working for a company though, you'll obviously kind of sort this out uh, internally. But afterwards, once we're all set and you've kind of kept a record of all this stuff so you don't lose it, go ahead and click OK. That's gonna go ahead and basically inject everything that we need to. I'm gonna go ahead and also uh, check this remember passwords just to make my life a little bit easier. Uh, and then we're just gonna go ahead and click next in the process. We are gonna generate signed bundles here for the release variant. That's really all that we care about at this moment. And it's gonna go ahead and start running here. We see the Gradle build running. And so essentially at the end of this process, we are going to have a signed bundle that we can go ahead and upload to our Google Play which we can uh, see here inside of our uh, dashboard, inside of the Google Play Console. So in order to do so, we're gonna go ahead and go to the releases overview or maybe production. And there's a button up here to create a new release. Now there are plenty of other things we need to do before we can go ahead and actually publish the application, but we can get to those as we run into them. But it is pretty straightforward here once we have the app bundle, which it looks like we have right here. We see here, there's a little balloon generated sign bundle here. You can go ahead and locate this for us, thank you. And we can see that inside of our project directory, inside of the app, there is now a release folder, and there's the app release.aab. AAB stands for Android App Bundle, which is exactly what we told it to do. We can see that it was modified today, right now. And we have 6.2 megabyte file here, so. We can actually go ahead and just continue back over to our uh, Play Store here. And we're just gonna go ahead and drag this file into this uh, little location. It's gonna go ahead and upload this bundle here to Google, or to at least Google Play. And it's gonna start running some, not necessarily tests, but it's gonna be extracting some information uh, out for us. And we basically do have to wait for this process to end, which, wonderful, it actually, ended pretty quickly. Um, so we get to here release name, we have 1, 1.0. This information here comes from within our build.gradle file. We see the version code of 1 and the version name of 1.0. If we got something like 1.0.0, we would see that uh, reflected here inside of these parentheses. We get some information as well in this little line which we could click this arrow to see more details on, but basically API level 21 plus, target SDK 30, and like I said, more information if we really wanted to click on that. Uh, again, all that information is reflected here as far as minimum and target SDK version. So everything's kind of in sync as we would expect. I'm just basically gonna go ahead and post here the initial release as our uh, release notes. Maybe I'll say thanks for following along. Uh, if you're coming from YouTube and then we're just gonna go ahead and click save here. In a traditional sense or in a I guess uh, an update path, this is exactly what you would do. You would generate a new app bundle, you would upload it here, you would add in your release notes, you would click save, and then you'd go to review release. These three errors here are preventing us from starting the rollout to production, uh, and we basically need to complete the rest of the store listing in order to go ahead and do that. 
as you can see here, it says that we need to, uh, or they're listed in the dashboard, but we need a full description of our store listing. We have no countries or regions have been selected. So there's a whole bunch of other configuration that we need to go ahead and do. So I'm gonna set that up now and then we'll get back to it. So jumping back here a little bit, uh, if we just go to the dashboard here that is this little in this little left panel, uh, we see that there's like a little bit of a checklist here, set up your app. I basically click through so far a couple of these different items, says five of seven complete. Uh, and you basically just click through and kind of just do, you know, what they ask or, or you, you know, fill out a questionnaire or whatever the case is. And you basically just provide Google all the information they need to understand how your app functions, who it's supposed to target, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so there's just a lot of this like maintenance and administrative tasks that need to be set up. So I'm just going to get back to it. All right. And we are back here. I think we have everything set up. I don't think we need to set up our testers. Um, but the only two things or the only, yeah, two out of three completed here, two out of three completed here, and they both say review and roll out a release. So I think we're ready to go. Um, I do just want to touch on one thing here inside of the grow, the store presence, the main store listing. This is where the like bread and butter of your, uh, I mean, it says it here, the main store listing, right? This is what the users are going to see when they search your application. So you need to have a, a name, a short description, a full description, which just, you know, it could be better, but it just gives a longer description of the application, maybe the features. Uh, you upload your app icon here. And this is also part of the reason why the 512 by 512 is so important. If we watched the last episode where we created the app icon, it generates for you a 512 by 512 based on your icon with the transparent background. And so that just kind of drops into place here. This feature graphic is kind of the header that you'll see when the user searches the app. Uh, I created this in Canva, which is what I use to create all the different thumbnails for the different videos on the channel. Uh, I can also link that in the description so you can check it out, but it's really easy. This one has a 1024 by 500 uh, limitation and it has to be specific. So Canva allows you to set a uh, exact size that you want. So that looks good. If you follow along with the series, this uh, little background should look familiar to you. And then otherwise you need the phone screenshots here. Uh, so just kind of took a bunch of different screenshots of the application and how it works and functions and all that kind of stuff. I haven't done the tablet ones for the 7 and 10 inch tablets, even though they have asterisks next to them, usually indicating required. I haven't been pinched for it yet. So uh, anyway, we will see uh, if that becomes a problem. So since we started it before, there was the edit release option. Uh, it has basically everything, the, the version 1.0, um, our little release notes and whatnot. So it kind of saved everything for us, which is convenient. And when we go ahead and say start rollouts of production or review, we have the option now of starting our rollouts of production. We can take a look here at uh, our one warning. App bundle contains code that might be obfuscated, blah, blah, blah. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, at this point here, we can just simply start our rollout. Yes, we are going to go ahead and roll out. So here we are. Um, we have just published an app to the Google Play Store. If that's the first time you've ever seen it or uh, at least seen it happen on YouTube, go ahead and smash the like button. I really appreciate that. Uh, but basically, we now have uh, I set up 176 countries. So this is available all over the world. So if you are on the Google Play Store or can get access to it, um, you should be able to search this application. I'll put a link in the description of the video for it. Um, however, it might take a little while to get reviewed and published originally. Um, that does kind of, it, it normally takes a little bit longer with the very first one that you end up uh, uploading, but also Google's just been kind of slammed because of COVID and all that kind of stuff. So even in work, I've seen updates take as long as two weeks to get processed, which is absolutely unheard of. But there is one thing inside of here that I did want to find really quickly. Here it is at the top, kind of above this little release section, there's a publishing overview here. Uh, and actually you can manage the publishing. So there are two different ways you can do it. I'm gonna set the manage publishing off, but basically if you wanted to upload a, either the app to the app store or a release, uh, a new update, you can actually enable manage publishing. And so basically that's going to allow Google to approve your request without pushing it to all the users. Once the app is approved, if you have manage publishing on, you have to come inside this uh, portal here inside this dashboard and actually release it to the public. So if you wanted to do like a stage release or if you wanted to get it approved by Google ahead of time, whatever, you could do that inside of the manage publishing status. 
I have it off so basically once they approve it, it's going to become available inside of the App Store. There's a whole bunch of other information in here. This video has probably gotten a little long so if you've really made it this far, pat yourself on the back. I really appreciate a like on the video and if you notice you've made it this far and have not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Hopefully it means you're interested in the content and there's plenty more content to come. Uh, so consider subscribing, consider enabling notifications so that you don't miss out. But I think that will do it here. We will probably be back in the next episode where we're going to have this up and running and we'll be able to see um, our app on the App Store here. Obviously it's not there at the moment, but hopefully in the new future we will have it up and running. So be on the lookout, search it on your Google Play Store every now and then, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.